ما تدومون بالجامعه دكتوره ها؟ نو اونلاين اتس موست موستلي اونلاين واتس اباوت الاكزامز؟ اونلاين از ويل يس يعني المفروض من زمان ترى فكره لما طلعوا القوانين فروم 1983 شود بي اونلاين يعني عندك هالكاتيجوري هذه بس هم نطروا لغايه لما يصير عندنا ظروف جبرتنا ناخذ الاونلاين او عموما ب ب بال والله حلو في اجزاء حلوه يعني اوف كورس بس عموما في اجزاء ب... حلوه وسهله مثلا الكوز يا بس هو بالبدايه لما فتحوها كان يعني اتس فيري ايزي ناو لا امبلا يعني وي وي ليجي ميت ليتل بيت يعني حصرناها اكثر شويه <تصفيق> لانه ما يصير يعني هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون؟ ما يصير اكيد 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 احنا آه... Two minutes and we'll start in shower. In shower. It will be in English, Doctor. Huh? Yes. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, joining a webinar. Uh, as you know, every week we have um, a new keynote speaker, and today we have a keynote speaker from uh, Kuwait. This is me, Dr. Ahmed Al Gattan, the founder of uh, ETAR uh, Group. Uh, special thank for who all uh, attend uh, today class and I know uh, actually there is some of you attend the class one hour before the uh, the seminar so thank you so much uh, and uh, I am really appreciate it. Our speaker today is uh, Dr. Uh, Fatin Abu Amir is a graduate uh, is graduated. Uh, from Ain uh, Shams University in Egypt, and currently 
uh, she work as an int uh, interester instructor in economics at Kuwait University, teaching environmental and economics from the uh, theoretical and historical point of view. She attends different conferences locally and internationally. She presented different papers in uh, sustainable uh, development from economics and uh, ecological system perspective. Dr. Uh, Abu Amir has been appointed a doctor thesis external examiner from different uh, master and PhD candidate. She has an, uh, an excellent knowledge and uh, practice, a practice of, un uh, of understanding of standards and uh, frameworks of the hi uh, higher education uh, political with quality assurance. She holds different academic uh, certificates from uh, Harvard University. Also, Dr. Abu Amir is uh, a di uh, has different and many uh, uh, paper that appear in uh, in uh, international uh, journals. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rafatin, for accepting my invitation. Uh, Dr. Rafatin, you have uh, 40 minutes to one hour uh, for your uh, speech, and then after that, we'll open the floor for any question from the all uh, uh, audience for 45 minutes. You have two type to uh, to ask uh, Dr. Afatin uh, your question. You can uh, type your question in Q&A below the screen, or you can just raise your hand and we'll go one by one to ask Dr. Afatin your question. Also, special thank for who attend uh, the webinar on YouTube. So anyone also write uh, uh, the question in the, in the chat, I will... Uh, uh, ask the question uh, to uh, Dr. Afatin. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Afatin, for accepting uh, my invitation, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Ahmed, for uh, this wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, and we are here to, um, to uh, have a mutual uh, interest for the uh, researchers from all over the world. Thank you, everybody, attending this uh, seminar. Actually, it's not a seminar, it's like a meeting, okay? And um, uh, I would like to share the screen first, Ahmed, now, if you can just, okay. Okay. First of all, I will introduce myself again. Uh, this is Dr. Fatina Abu Amr. I'm an instructor of economics and environmental management at Kuwait University. We are here today to talk about the promoting research knowledge exchange by exploring the role of decision making as a different knowledge production. When we are talking different knowledge production, we are here in uh, developing countries and precisely in uh, countries uh, uh, Middle East region, uh, we lack of some of the researching regarding the knowledge production. So today I pick something uh, for everybody to share and uh, it's uh, uh, very important to know about. As I said, it's exploring the role of policy makers as a different uh, knowledge production. Thank God nowadays we are living in the digital era where everything is very uh, digitized and it's uh, easy to uh, have a reference of it and you can just easy, just a click of the mouse and you can just uh, have this information. Where our lives Doctor, become easy now. Yes. Uh, Doctor, if you, don't, if you don't mind, just maximize the, the screen. I maximize the screen, okay, there. Uh, it's below. You can see the book, the right side. The you know, right. Yes, okay. here. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Again, uh, after thanking our God for nowadays that we are living in digital era, and our life has become very easy in terms of communication. For all researchers, choosing the topic to submit will depend on the country and if there is any phenomena they live in lately. Most of the journals, the, the A journals, will not accept your papers and, unless it will be very late uh, accident or it's late uh, phenomena that you are living in, such as pandemic, such as uh, um, like uh, wars in the Middle East or something like that. And economically, the uh, oil prices will come down. I chose my subject due to my full understanding of being proactive uh, is the golden role for a great research. In our developing countries, and specifically in the Middle East, we still have a gap between different stages regarding researching debates. Furthermore, I am a strong believer in that collaboration between researchers and other worldwide universities that will be a mutual added value for all parties. Environment is my field of interest. Therefore, this suggested research paper subjected environmental policy and decision making in Kuwait from behavior to policy making that I choose for you today to talk about. This paper is an associate research with our beloved Professor Albert from ASU, Ain Shams University. The basic information, the project title, it's environmental policy and decision making in Kuwait from behavior to policy making. Environmental policy and decision making explores the protection of long term natural resources use and environmental quality through changes in human behavior and policy. This concerns the economic and social forces that impact decision making across society considering how policies are formulated and implemented and what impact that will be on the society as well as how to best engage individuals and communities to respond to the environment challenges. This comes from the childhood. This comes from the community. This comes from the responsibility of the CSR. That's what I do believe. The aims and goals of this project. This project develops a method to explore the relationship between natural resources and the policies by focusing on understanding how these policies that affect the environment and natural resources are designed and implemented important to know about this because we are developing a method to explore the relationship between natural resources and policies which i do believe on focusing on understanding how these policies affect our environment and natural resources were designed and implemented and to keep something like reservoir or for the new generation uh, in the sustainable development which is our responsibility for everybody. We are still here for ends and goals for this uh, uh, project. Kuwait's environment patterns are leading to higher level of negative impacts on individuals, health and environment. Consequently, develop mechanism become extremely important. This project addresses the need for significant change and planning public that influence healthier individual behavior and environmentally friendly pattern. And the final goal here will be to encourage the individuals to improve experimental quality of using natural resources and to recommend evidence-based policies for a new generation which is our responsibility to keep for the new generation uh, the natural resources 
as it is. But of course, because we are using it and sometimes you are damaging it, we're not leaving it as it is. But at least it's the right to keep for the new generation uh, some of the resources and especially the natural resources what we are talking about over here. So this is my final goal here in order to develop their future for the new generation. It's a new approach to the policies will help diversity oppose oil economy, create healthier opportunities for living and encourage better off environmentally sustainable space. In this situation, I would like to speak a little bit about the free riding goods. Some people, they are abusing using the free riding goods. Anything like uh, public parks, like, like if you have a free transport, they are abusing it. So they have a, a, let's say it's a negative behavior, which is we need now uh, for policy maker, makers to uh, uh, put uh, uh, more penalties or sort of if they damage anything from the, these uh, uh, free goods. And actually, this, these policies or, or these uh, 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 laws, it's there, but, but, but we need to refresh it from now and on. The research status, it, it's a planning. When we plan this project, it deals with data collection, research approach, case studies, methodologies were defined. Field work is done with data collection. We did that in two phase period. In the hot weather and in the cold weather with the local surveyors. Sur surveyors. And also photography being used to lighten characteristics of case study. Digitized data with information coding is done. So this is our planning stage. The main activity and outputs. Key activities with outputs were done such as, such as this website is www.lse.ac.uk, which is London School of Economics.academia.uk. And this is Concerned Middle East Center for Research, Kuwait program, Kuwait academic collaboration and global warming in Kuwait. So if you did uh, an associate research, you have to do according to certain standards and using uh, certain key activities with, so to come out with outputs accordingly. The research status, other collaboration, in case to promote your work and the research, you have to deal with other universities, other research center with grants. And in my case here, I use, in my case here, I use, uh, I, I uh, make a deal with LSE researchers with grants in Kuwait and LSE Middle East Center. We use the qualitative data of LSE slash KU team and GIS data. Also this project in collaboration with Professor Nader Albert, as I said, and it focuses on the case of decision-making identified during the environmental impact assessment process of Kuwait. So environment is very important. We have to keep it. We have to trace uh, the negative issues and uh, try to clean the path for the new generation. Next is the planned activities. Where collecting the data is done, activities are as follows. Work paper one to two, it's been about definitions and classifications of environments and public functions. Work paper number three, analyzing existing relations between environment and public practice. 
Work paper number four is assess key policies influencing the relation of data collection and interviews with key factors. This data analysis with policy recommendation. And after all, and finally, to discuss the outputs with the Kuwait key factors, policy makers, consultants, academics, and etc. This paper writing and discussion should be dissemination of output through workshop and seminars. This to gain a promoting for your research, you have to make a dissemination uh, through workshops, seminars, conferences. And luckily, we are now here in the pandemic, so you, so you can do it uh, online and you don't have to travel from country to country like we used to do before. Comes to the summary of the project. Kuwait's environmental patterns are leading to higher level of negative impacts on individuals, health and environment. Consequently, re-evaluating environment, environmental development mechanism become necessary. This project addresses the need for significant change in environments implementation that would influence healthier individuals' behavior and conduct and environmentally friendly mobility patterns. So our environment, Kuwait environment, it's very important in terms of the patterns. Building upon the resource environmental project, this exploration unpacks the relationship between the built environment and the use of public space. With the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, appealing for an increase in elements have on outdoor activities and individual behavior. It examines the variable that generate livable and successful public space and reposes methods to integrate these results into evidence-based policy making for more sustainable environmental development in Kuwait. So it's all here about sustainable environmental development in Kuwait. Still here in the summary of this project, specifically three categories of knowledge gaps are addressed in this project, which are as follows. The first gap is the maps, public space, descriptors, and their urban morphology, including accessibility, physical features, and makers. The second gap, shifting to the second gap, records its evolution and development over the time. Sorry. This includes changing behavior and path dependencies and the impact of physical structures on users. Moving to the third gap, which is the knowledge gap, which is our address and very important part here of my project. Knowledge gap addresses special, special practices, which is al-mamarasat al-makaniya and policies, which is very important. That's what we talk about here uh, when I said it's there is a free riding and you have a public goods and, and somebody is abusing it and uh, they have a negative behavior regarding the public goods, such as the uh, public parks. And where are some people uh, when they go to make an entertainment with their families, they, they go uh, and um, they use the goods of the, uh, the park. But after they leave, you will find a big mess. Uh, they don't put the, uh, the, the trash, I mean, the things inside the litter pan. They don't uh, leave the, sorry for that, the toilets as clean as it was, etc., etc., etc which is very negative uh, behavior and it should be 
uh, for the policymakers do uh, something about it. Qualitative methods and investigation, including observation. So this project is about the qualitative method and uh, of investigation and observation, counting, mapping, and survey. The end goal is to understand how environmental conduct can positively and or negatively impact the quality of life of everyday users to encourage sociality, sociality uh, that would improve the experimental quality of environmental conducts in our communities, especially in Kuwait, the address of my project. And to recommend evidence-based policies for new environmental practices being developed for the future. Still in the summary of the project, a qualities framework of analysis goes beyond abstract data and develops deeper into the everyday activity. This approach will help diversity a post oil economy, create healthier opportunities for living and encourage environmental sustainable policies. So it's a, a qualitative, framework of analysis and it goes beyond the abstract data and develops deeper into everyday activity. I choose this approach because to help diversity for a post oil economy in order to create healthier opportunities for living and encourage environmentally sustainable or suitable policies. The reference I use for this project, identify a research area of interest. I took the guideline from ALM thesis from Harvard University. So it's harvard.edu. Also, I use the uh, LSE, which I love <laughs> so much. It's the LSE. Academia.uk, the Middle East Center Research Kuwait Program and Kuwait Academic Collaboration. And the Environmental Policy, ucdavis.edu, Research Category, Decision Making and the Global Warming in Kuwait. Thank you very much for listening for my, to my uh, brief uh, lecture. I hope everybody is interesting and uh, um, I hope everybody uh, see it as useful as I see and uh, ready to uh, discuss anything with you, ready to help anybody ask for my uh, help. And this is my email, Fatina Abu Amr at kuwaituniversity.edu.kw. Before I will go to questions and answers. I would like to, uh, excuse me, Ahmed, but just to, uh, hello, researcher here, a very good news. From this place, I would like to announce for all researchers in all the fields and all over the world, uh, in the social media applications, kindly visit hashtag CFP, which is call for proposals in collaboration with KFAS. KFAS is the Kuwait Foundation uh, for uh, Associated Sciences in Kuwait. And uh, uh, some of the researches are funded, especially if it's very vital. And the deadline is in end of June, 2021. Before that, if you have uh, an ish initiative paper and uh, you are not sure it's finalized, you can submit it um, before March. 2021. And then there's a, a very nice people that can help you over there in Kafas and they can do um, re-evaluating your paper. So, and uh, they will direct you to do the right thing. So you can submit the final date, which is the cutoff date of it, June 2021. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Fatina, for your uh, presentation and also for your announcement. I really appreciate it. I hope uh, all uh, the researchers uh, take this uh, this opportunity, and uh, I encourage everyone to to use this hashtag and you know see uh, the CAFAS. Uh, it's uh, one of uh, big organization here in Kuwait, and they really fund the. Uh, researcher, um, so it's a good opportunity. Uh, there is some question, it's in, in the chat, so please, if you want to have any question, just uh, text it or type it in the Q&A or just raise your hand so uh, I can uh, read the question. We have a question here uh, from uh, Ahmed. Uh, Karim, uh, he has two questions actually. The first one, how to choose a topic to write a thesis for both master and PhD researchers? The second one, what is your advice to the post doctor in terms of doing research or no? Thank you, Ahmed, for the question. Uh, I do appreciate it. It's a great question and it's always repeatable. Uh, how to choose a topic to write if you are a master or doctorate um, researcher. It depends on your country. It depends on the field be, uh, you are writing in. And you know, for, for all the researchers, it's, it's like a sea and you have to dig down and choose your fish. You know, uh, so um, for me, uh, my field is environment, uh, um, although I'm economics, but I like environment more uh, for sustainable development uh, issues and uh, for the right of the new generation to keep for them some reservoirs. For This is the answer for the first question. Uh, I hope it's okay. Um, second one will be, uh, what's your advice for post doctorate? in terms of doing uh, research or no, of course. Uh, my advice to postdoctorate people there, keep going on and be positively finding in new researchers going on and on and on, never stop. Because uh, the whole world will depend on the researchers. Um, let me tell you something, Ahmed. It's regarding um, the epidemic. Uh, if there is no researchers, we will never now find a vaccination. So never stop doing uh, either you are postdoctorate or you are uh, MBA or you are doctorate or you are uh, in one of the fields, okay? So uh, please never stop uh, doing your research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fatina. They have a question from Ajmal. Uh, please unmute your mic. Hello, can yes, you listen? No. Yes, okay. we can. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Ma'am, may, may I ask you a question? Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, my question is that, that, can you listen please? My, my voice is clear? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it's a clear. It's a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now it is clear? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Previously, I was working uh, in, uh, in a university in Islamabad as a research supervisor where I had to uh, give the topic to the students about uh, the projects, final projects of M-Commerce regarding business innovation. And uh, a very interesting topic uh, about the environment development that you suggested in your speech. And uh, that is very uh, fine. But uh, what type of uh, research level? It would be a feasibility research for the students, number one. And the other thing is that when we have a lot many projects, designs and topics, for example, uh, a student earlier uh, before my question uh, described uh, asking about the topics. Topics are a lot many topics are there and we have to uh, uh, guide them and uh, we can get the project complete at the completion of that feasibility or a project or physically it will be complete, there will be a difference, feasibility and completion of the project. For both, how we can uh, support a student or a researcher? 
For visibility, and uh, thank you very much, Ajmal, for your question. It's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, you dig deep down more in the sea, and you talk about visibility and the completion. Of course, there is a certain places, especially each university has a research center. You can, after applying for your research or uh, uh, your supervisor, uh, you have to uh, find in your university a research department or a, a vice president for research researchers, and then you can apply for them for the visibility of your uh, research. So, and also we have in Kefas, uh, as we said mentioned earlier, there are very good people there. They can just guide you and then um, uh, let you uh, your your research will will be dependable for in the future use. I hope I answer you, uh, Ajman. Thank you. Uh, okay, it is a good thing that uh, the university is supporting for that. Is it uh, when the project is completed, it is it will be up to the level of doctorate or postdoctorate? You mean in my university, or you mean any other university, Ajman? In, in your university, please. Uh, yes, we have different programs. If you are a doctorate, we have the program. If you are postdoctorate, it's another thing. And uh, we have an external uh, exchange for the postdoctorate. I hope you will apply for bpaa.edu.kw. You will find more information regarding your case. And I hope you will um, you will get what you want from there, uh, especially if you will ha want to be uh, your uh, postdoctorate program or something. Thank you, Doctor Fatna. If you don't mind, if you can uh, write the, the the link that you just said in the chat, so they can, uh, you know, uh, reach to it, please. Sorry. I I will write it down. For, uh, yes. Yes, I will write it down. Ajmal, uh, Ajmal, Doctor, Doctor Fatina, she will uh, uh, write the link that she just said in the chat, so you can, you know, uh, reach Thank to you. it and you can go to it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any more questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a question from uh, Sonia. Uh, she asked, thank you, Dr. Fatina, for your uh, informative lecture today. I would like to ask uh, for MBA student, uh, what are main thing to do in terms of choosing the topic for the thesis? Uh, thank you, Sonia, for the question. Um, thank you for your compliment. Uh, for the MBA student, some of the universities, you will, especially here in Kuwait, you will do your uh, master degree without any thesis, but that's fine. But if you want to go to abroad, you have to do your thesis and then you will start your doctorate. But for her question, um, uh, uh, it depends on the field. It depends on the topic you will write on. It depends on the situation now we are living. Uh, it depends on the phenomena that we are living on today. The, that's my answer to Sonia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Fatina. Uh, also, we have uh, a question from uh, Rana Sabhan. Uh, so, do advise us to uh, promote our research by reaching out to association related to our topics? If so, any thoughts, how can we find these associations? Thank you, Rana, for your uh, question. Of course, all over the world, there's a lot of associations to help uh, the students uh, in, in, in concern of the academia. Um, in my country, uh, as I said, we have uh, KISER, we have KIFAS, all these uh, uh, organizations, it's in, in NGOs, and it's uh, help 
uh, anybody want to make their researchers. Um, even non Kuwaitis, it's not only for the Kuwaitis, it's non Kuwaitis as well. And if you are solo, yeah, and you don't work in university or you don't work, you don't work, you're just uh, doing your research for your own, uh, they will uh, support. So it is Kisser and uh, Kefas. Thank you, Rena. Hello. If, if anyone has any question, please just uh, raise hand or you can write the question in Q&A. Please don't write your question in the chat because the chat is keep rolling. Uh, Dr. Rani, uh, uh, Fatina, thank you so much. And also, uh, I have a question. And as you said, uh, you, you supervise a PhD student and uh, uh, super and a master student or just an exter external uh, examiner? No, I supervise some master and PhD. All right, so uh, what is your way to supervise uh, your master or, or PhD student? There is here many of, uh, of uh, doctors from different universities around the world, and there is schools for, you know, supervised of uh, the, those students. So what is your way or what is, uh, you know, the way or the, your strategy to supervise uh, those PhD and master students? My strategy depends on the, uh, the following. I would like to see the student weekly. I would like to see the pro progress uh, all, all, um, all the time. Um, thank you to uh, social media. Thank you to internet. Thank you because we are, as I said, we are digital, living in digital era. So we can see each other, even if we, there is no um, uh, uh, physical seeing, you can see it uh, through the uh, uh, online or anything, but I would like to supervise it uh, step by step. I don't want him, uh, I know some different schools will let the student do what he will do and then uh, before um, uh, like one month or two months, uh, he will come to the um, supervisor and then uh, uh, he will see the thesis. It will be a long days to, to, uh, to read, long days to uh, analyze. Uh, no, it's better to see it from the scratch. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fatina. We have a question from uh, Dr. Awad Ibrahim from University of Portsmouth in United Kingdom. Yes, Dr. Please unmute your mic, Dr. Awad. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for organizing such useful uh, seminars, and thank you, Dr. Fatina, for this interesting and exciting uh, presentation. Actually, I don't know what is your research approach, whether you follow quantitative or qualitative approach, and also what is your advice for the researchers who follow, who apply the qualitative approach because they struggle to find a high response rate when they conduct interviews or questionnaire. And they send, for example, to 1,000 uh, audience and they receive maybe 50 or 40 responses only. So what is your advice to reach or to collect more responses to increase the response rate? Thank you. Thank you, Awad, for your question. Uh, it's an interesting question as well. Uh, for my uh, project, I use the qualitative, uh, uh, maybe because I, I believe in that, uh, very strong uh, I believe. And um, my advice for, um, for the using this uh, method or methodology, it depends on observation, but I use case studies, I use, um, uh, field visiting, photography, and uh, for collecting data, of course, uh, we need some questionnaire, but mostly I did it through case studies and uh, live visiting and uh, write down the, uh, the data. This is what I strongly uh, recommend. Thank you, Awad. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Awad. Thank you. 
Uh, also, we have a question from uh, Dr. Aranda uh, Hariri. Uh, I have intervention of uh, Dr. Uh, Fatina. Kindly allow me to add on to her uh, valuable answer about choosing a topic for thesis. Uh, Doctora, if you uh, if you want, just you know, raise your hand so we can hear um, your answer. If you don't mind. Yes, Doctor Randa, please unmute your mic, oh, please. Yes, Sal yes. Salam alaikum. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Fatina very much about for her informative presentation and valuable research. And I kindly ask her if she allows me to add to her valuable answer regarding choosing a topic for thesis for uh, master and uh, PhD students. If uh, I get her approval, I will proceed. Yes, please. Yes. This is mutual uh, interest, right? Totally. Yes, exactly. Uh, I just want to, uh, to add to what uh, Dr. Fatina said that uh, we always uh, advise students uh, to look around uh, themselves, to, to look around uh, in regarding to their field, uh, to find any problem or any issue that's around uh, taking place. For example, if they are MBA students, they have to see what problems are taking place, for example, right now uh, in the business uh, sector, uh, especially in the context of their study. Uh, and uh, the, they need to start from here because we always say that the research starts from a problem. And this problem, it's called a state of, uh, research problem because not all the time it has to be in, to have negative connotation. It may have even uh, positive connotation, maybe the success of a certain company, continuous success, or for example, the bankruptcy of a company of ba or bankruptcies of companies. The same thing regarding any other discipline. So you need to start from the problem and validate this problem that you are not the only one who feels that this problem is taking place, but you need to validate it from other people in the sector and you can start from there. So you will find immediately the topic in front of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fatten, for your generosity. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for moderating this valuable research. Thank you very much. Hope I Thank you, Randa. Uh, I do appreciate, of course, of course, I, uh, all students should be look around. Um, actually, we should teach our student from the beginning when they join university, how to do certain projects. So they will, when they will reach uh, postgraduate, like an MBA student, especially uh, according to the material they are standing, uh, studying and uh, the topic they would like to write in, they have to look around. So uh, in early stages, we should uh, teach them to do that. So when they will be, uh, inshallah, uh, doctorate uh, uh, student or PhD student, they, they will be trained with it. And then when they are postgraduate, they, I mean postdoctorate, there will be uh, talent in this field. Uh, in the developed countries, they use these methods. In our countries, developing countries, especially in the Middle East, we are working on it. And then one day, uh, maybe in our time, maybe in our children's time, we will reach this point of view and wish the success for all our uh, students all over the world. Thank you, Randa. Thank you, Dr. Randa, for uh, uh, your answer. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, Dr. Fatten, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Med uh, Shaber. Uh, Dr. Mitch Shabir, please, if you don't mind, uh, I, I can see you click, uh, you raise your hand and then uh, you lower it. You, you just need you to click it one time to, to appear if you want to ask a question, just one time. All right. Uh, also, we have uh, another question from uh, uh, Rana, uh, PhD student. Uh, are supposed to publish uh, parts of their research, yet it's time consume, uh, consuming to write and publish a single paper. 
Can you advise us how to manage our time and effort to do that? Yes. Thank you, Rana, for this question. Um, while writing, after choosing the topic, you have to search for certain journal to accept your uh, your um, subject or your uh, research. And now, most of the <clears throat> excuse me, most of the universities or sorry, most of the uh, journals will. Um, uh, open for publishing from January till 1st of March. And then they will open again from uh, September to October. So you have two time a year to uh, submit your paper to the journals. I hope I answer uh, what you need, Rana. And I would love to help. You have my email uh, and contact numbers. I would love to help anybody ask for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fatina. Also, we have another question from Ajmal. Thank you very much for a second opportunity that you provided to me, Sam. And, uh, and the question is that when uh, when we opt any object, uh, any project we, for which the proposal is being accepted, and for that we have to because I am basically of uh, finance and uh, accounting, back, accounting background. So though economical issues are the new uh, requirements for the uh, uh, sponsored people or sponsored organization. And, but I have to uh, discuss a lot and my major trend of my thesis would be toward the financial and accounting issue of the project. Along with that feasibility, along with that the completion of the project so I can uh, contact with the, within the organization, the people for the uh, financial issues or accounting issues or for other associate professors, we will have to contact with them for the, this issue about the financial and accounting issue of the project regarding that. Uh, thank you, Ajmal. I hope I uh, understand your question, but, but if you write uh, why why are you know, let me uh, ask you this question why it's uh, combined uh, research you have why it's 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 uh, um, um, financial and uh, you have associate something and you said something else no you have to focus on one and then of course uh, all our researchers are uh, stages means you have part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. And it depends on your supervisor. Any research paper should be under the supervision of the uh, supervisor. So he has to tell you the focal point and uh, how you are uh, working uh, well, do that, do this, correct the path for you. Uh, uh, Ajmal, I hope, yes. I hope, Ajmal, yes. Are, sorry, Dr. Afat. Uh, Ajmal, uh, are you a PhD student or you finish, you graduate or you finish your PhD? I have still a master degree holder, but, but I have uh, an opportunity of guiding the student, master students at university as a teacher and uh, a, a coordinator with these other PhD students as well. So are you looking for fund? Uh, so just uh, to understand your both. question. For both, for both. Because if the project and proposal is accepted for which we have to work for, for that issue, research guideline, guideline along with the fund, both things are required. So what we oh, will I have to do according uh, because- uh, sorry, Let sorry, me just ask to, you, excuse me, Ajmal, uh, let me ask you, what university you are? I was a visiting faculty at Alam Iqbal Open University, Islamabad. No, now you are in your country, and that is where in your country? Uh, Pakistan. Okay. In your country, I think when you finish your master, it's tutoring, right? Yeah, and that means you are tutoring the students. Uh, at uh, up to the 2015, I have completed over there many projects of the students uh, as a supervisor. Mm hmm and uh, but my recent question is that if the uh, again i am enrolled i am getting my enrollment in your organization as a student of phd 
then for that issue i can con- contact for external supervisors for uh, financial and accounting issues because and the project must have a, a benefit a financial benefits as well to complete you know that my university it's a government university it's not a private university number one number two when you are uh, attached to a program doctorate program or a phd student in my university um it's uh, you know the fees it's not high number one number two uh I don't think we have such funding for the student unless uh, while you are teaching, while you are uh, studying, you will teach some of the courses. They will allow you. It will be exceptional for foreigners. It will not be for Kuwaiti people, just for foreigners. You have to visit www.kw.edu.com. Uh, uh, KW, which is um, uh, uh, Kuwait University, and you will go for uh, graduate studies uh, college. You will find all the information in English and Arabic, what you need uh, regarding uh, how to attach to a program, regarding funding of the program, regarding anything. Uh, and as I told you, uh, in future, if you would like to send an email, I will feed you back. If you Thank don't you. mind, uh, Dr. Fatina, let me uh, add some some point uh, for uh, Ajmal. Ajmal, uh, I, I totally understand your question and uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, see, about the fund that you have as, as your question, you have two parts. The first one is fund and the second one you want to cooperate with other PhD or doctor uh, uh, who can help you to, to, to manage and finish, finalize the, that paper to end with uh, publication. So in fund, there is several uh, several organizations and association that they can help you to get uh, fund. Uh, me, myself, in my PhD, I got more than $25,000, okay, in just funding. And until now, I maybe uh, more than $40,000. Uh, so that is, is, is good, okay? How I, uh, how I did that? Just you, what you need to, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Fatina, but uh, Ajmal, he is in my field. So I am doctor in accounting and finance. So I am, uh, you know, specialized in this uh, major. And, you know, this is funding is my game, let's say. So uh, you need to, to, <laughs> to join and be a member in an in, uh, in association, big association like AAA, American Accounting Association in Europe. Europe, Europe, European Accounting Association in UK, BAFA. Uh, so those are the big, the big uh, uh, accounting association around the world. Also, there is in Australia. Uh, so those usually they organize the conferences. So I encourage you to you know apply. Mostly they they give fund to attend uh, those conferences for free. Uh, you can take this opportunity and actually I really really really. I uh, encourage everyone here to uh, to take this opportunity. We are in COVID-19. They, you know, they uh, the conference right now, it's all virtual and online. So uh, you save money, you save the travel tickets, uh, hotels, and many other stuff. So attend that conference and see what is the hot topic, which is the main thing in the, in the conference. Collaborate with other uh, researcher. You can know who is in your field, and you know what what they talk about. You know what is their ideas. The the person who who speech in the conference in the twenty minute he summarize four years in in his PhD in just twenty minutes, and you can hear all his story in just twenty minute and see how many how many PhD student or master student you can hear and get his idea and see what is maybe he got a new measure of some variables or whatever. So uh, here you can get uh, some fund. Also in Kuwait, as uh, Doctora uh, Fatina uh, uh, announced, Kafas. Uh, uh, you just uh, you can type in in Google K F A S, and uh, it's in Arabic and in English, so it's easily you can you can see the fund. And as she said, if your topic is uh, unique, you can get the fund. It's not that you know rare or, uh, situation. No, you can get the fund. Uh, and as I said, all the association you can get the fund as well. BAFA, AAA, can uh, uh, in 
AC, triple A in Canada. Uh, so all of them, I got funds from everywhere, actually. And just, you know, apply, that's it. The, the question, uh, I have uh, one of my friend, uh, actually, he said, uh, he talked to me like before three days. I said, Ahmed, I don't have time to, uh, to apply for this one. How you organized? How you got those funds? I said to him, I don't, uh, I, when I applied for fund, I didn't, you know, uh, uh, wait for that fund to uh, I, uh, when uh, wait to get that fund. No, I just apply. When it come, that come. So just apply. It won't take that time, okay? And you know, when if you if you uh, you know have a luck and you get that fund, that's good. And you can use it from different stuff. Not just uh, for research. Uh, you can for traveling to conference. You can many many other stuff. So I think uh, to answer both your question in one is attending conferences. Attending conference, you can get fund, know people, and also know the people who are specifically work in your field, which you can know them and collaborate with them. Also, uh, the, the, the same, same thing with your second answer, how you collaborate with other and you are a master or PhD, I am one of the PhD students when I were a PhD student, I have many, many people ask me, Ahmed, how you publish paper and you are at the same time PhD student? The question is, collaborate. I attend more than 50 uh, conference, international conference. I know people the the in the in the in the research we did it's not like a thesis, not one one um, one uh, person work, it's the collaborate from different uh, uh, sites. So someone uh, do the literature, some other do, do the analysis, other finalize the paper and so on. So you can know people uh, um, uh, in, the, in the conferences and uh, uh, finalize and work in your paper. Uh, as you're supervising uh, your master student, I think the challenges here is to, to to transfer or to change your master thesis or master dissertation to paper. This is the challenges here. From 15,000 words to, to 9,000 to, to, to 9, words. And also, I don't know about Pakistan, but here in UK, in America, and most, uh, most universities around the world, master is just a license. So to let the student know how to uh, how the the how to write paper, so it give them an idea if they want to go to PhD how to write eighty thousand words. Okay, so and uh, uh, maybe it will be a duplicate idea. Maybe it will be you know it's not like a PhD. PhD you need to have a contribution in the paper, a contribution in the thesis. You need to do something nobody did it. In your country or the country that you choose so uh so i encourage you and encourage everyone to take the opportunity and check the association in your field like uh, american one european or bafa in uk um and also it, w it won't take that uh, fees you may be 15 15 pound if you are a phd student uh, in, in UK and other, I don't know, it depends to the to the association. And you can, you know, uh, attend workshop or conference and there is some of them free. So I really, uh, you know, um, encourage you to attend it. I hope you get you. my answer, arrangement. Thank you very much. But my specific question was again, same that the project which Madam is going to assign that our, their university is offering research so if uh, we are uh, offering, we are attending some proposal, we are giving some proposal to the university for regarding the development of quail specifically. So, uh, oh, for that, if the proposal is being appro uh, approved, then the funds are, funds are the secondary things. First is the proposal approval and the project for which the quail uh, authorities are going to uh, provide the opportunity to the researchers. This is the answer for uh, Dr. Fatina. I, I don't have an idea. I just launched a hashtag call for proposals. Why you didn't submit your proposal to the hashtag that I send? Uh, this is um, 
uh, like we said, it's Kefas, you know, the, the, the golden key is Kefas. Uh, this, it contributes worldwide with universities with a good reputation, especially in economics, uh, accounting, uh, of course, all, all the topics, but they concentrate on um, business administration with all fields, finance, accounting, and these things. So I recommend if you go to the any of the social media, you just write down hashtag, um, call for papers, CFP, uh, or call for presentations, and you will see it's, it's, it's a C, and you will, you will find what you, uh, what you, what you look for. C CIP, Victoria, CIP. Yeah, call for papers or call for presentation, CFP, hashtag CFP. CFP. Oh, uh, by the way, it's uh, not only in Kuwait. Uh, if you go to Germany, the hashtag is for Germany universities. The hashtag for uh, uh, UK universities all over the world. But what I'm concerned in my country, that's why I just mentioned KFAS. It's a non-profit organization. And it's dealing with funding for projects, especially with the collaboration with externals. I hope I answer you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You're Thank you, Ajman. Thank you so much. Uh, any other question? I think we reached to the end of uh, our uh, uh, webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fatina. I hope this is not the, the last time uh, you'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, starting of a series of uh, of uh, webinars or workshop with us, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the the webinar. I thank you, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fatina. Do you have any last word? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to be here, of course, uh, and I'm really happy to launch this uh, the hashtag CFP uh, for everybody. And funding, it's it's a very important subject, of course. I do agree with uh, Mr. Um, Ajmal, that uh, everybody is lacking of funding. But for researchers, uh, you said something, Ahmed, which is I really admire. You said you have to start whether there is a funding or no, and it will, it will come. The more you dig down, the more you will find, of course. And uh, uh, you know my son, I have a son, he's uh, nearly now, he will finish uh, an MBA from Gust University. I'm always guiding him. Inshallah, one day you will find him a doctor like me because I want, you know, we want this new generation to know the path uh, so they can help, uh, as I said, the environment, help, the, help their countries, help, uh, help the world. Because researchers, we do need more researchers in the world. Thank you, Ahmed, for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, also, I want to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fatina. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, uh, informative uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, also, please, uh, uh, everyone, uh, uh, when you leave uh, the, present, uh, the, the seminar, there is a, a survey, a small survey. It will take maybe 30 seconds. So please, please, uh, uh, if you can uh, do it, please. Uh, also, I want to announce for the next uh, week uh, webinar, it will be uh, about uh, umbrella umbrella review in 4th of February. I will announce it today in all uh, um, ETAR account. I will, uh, just a minute. So let me uh, put all the accounts so everyone can um, reach it. Just a minute. All right. Also, I want to thank the audience in, uh, in the YouTube who attend uh, today uh, uh, webinar. Those are, I put in the chat, those are all the accounts for ETAR. So uh, uh, keep your eye uh, on coming uh, webinar. Uh, so the next one, which will be in 4th uh, of uh, February, uh, the, the topic is Umbrella Review by uh, Ghadir Al-Harbi. Uh, 
she is uh, she's in in Queen University uh, Belfast in UK. So I encourage everyone to register, inshallah, today when I announce it, uh, and uh, see you uh, next week. Thank you so much, Dr. Fatina, and see you uh, inshallah soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salam. <laughs>